welcome back to Miss Summer's We Love Reading. We're still reading A Bear Called Paddington by Michael Bond. In this session, we will start chapter three. But first, a little reminder about what happened at the end of chapter two. Now, if you remember, Paddington was about to tell everybody his life story of how he came from Peru to be at Paddington Station when he promptly fell asleep in front of the fire. So here we go, chapter three. Paddington goes underground. Paddington was very surprised when he woke up the next morning and found himself in bed. He decided it was a nice feeling as he stretched himself and pulled the sheets up round his head with a paw. He reached out with his feet and found a cool spot for his toes. One advantage of being a very small bear in a large bed was that there was so much room. After a few minutes, he poked his head out cautiously and sniffed. <laughs> there was a lovely smell of something coming under the door. It seemed to be getting nearer and nearer. There were footsteps too coming up the stairs. As they stopped by his door, there was a knock and Mrs Bird's voice called out. Are you awake, young Paddington? Only just, called out Paddington, rubbing his eyes. The door opened. You've had a good sleep, said Mrs Bird as she placed a tray on the bed and drew the curtains. And you're a, a very privileged person to have breakfast in bed on a weekday. Paddington eyed the tray hungrily. There was half a grapefruit in a bowl, a plate of bacon and eggs, some toast and a whole pot of marmalade, not to mention a large cup of tea. Is all that for me? he exclaimed. Hmm, if you don't want it, I can soon take it away again, said Mrs Bird. Oh, I do, said Paddington hurriedly. It, it's just that I've never seen so much breakfast before. Well, you'd better hurry up with it. Mrs Bird turned in the doorway and looked back, because... You're going on a shopping expedition this morning with Mrs Brown and Judy. All I can say is, thank goodness I'm not going too. She closed the door. Hmm, now I wonder what she means by that, said Paddington. But he didn't worry about it for very long. There was far too much to do. It was the first time he had ever had breakfast in bed. And he soon found it wasn't quite so easy as it looked. First of all, he had trouble with the grapefruit. Every time he pressed it with his spoon, a long stream of juice shot up and hit him in the eye, which was very painful. And all the time he was worried because the bacon and eggs were getting cold. Then there was the question of the marmalade. He wanted to leave room for the marmalade. In the end, he decided it would be much nicer if he mixed everything up on one plate and sat on the tray to eat it. Oh, Paddington, said Judy when she entered the room a few minutes later and found him perched on the tray. Whatever are you doing now? Do hurry up. We're waiting for you downstairs. Paddington looked up an expression of bliss on his face, and part of his face, which could be seen behind egg whiskers and toast crumbs. He tried to say something, but all he could manage was a muffled grunting noise, which sounded like, I'm coming, all rolled into one. Really? Judy took out her handkerchief and wiped his face. You're the stickiest bear imaginable. I and if you don't hurry up, all the nice things will be gone. Mummy's going to buy you a complete new outfit from Barkridge's. I heard her say so. Now, 
comb your fur quickly and come down. As she closed the door, Paddington looked at the remains of his breakfast. Most of it was gone, but there was a large piece of bacon left, which it seemed a pity to waste. He decided to put it into his suitcase in case he got hungry later on. He hurried into the bathroom and rubbed his face over with some warm water. Then he combed his whiskers carefully and a few moments later, not looking perhaps as clean as he had done the evening before, but quite smart, he arrived downstairs. I hope you're not wearing that hat, said Mrs Brown as she looked down at him. Oh, do let him, Mummy, cried Judy. It's so unusual. Hmm, it's unusual all right, said Mrs Brown. I don't know that I've ever seen anything quite like it before. It's such a funny shape. I don't know what you'd call it. It's a bush hat said Paddington proudly, and it saved my life. Saved your life? repeated Mrs Brown. Don't be silly. How could a hat save your life? Paddington was about to tell her of his adventure in the bath the evening before when he received a nudge from Judy. She shook her head. Um, it's a long story, he said lamely. Then you'd better save it for another time, said Mrs Brown. Now come along, both of you. Paddington picked up his suitcase and followed Mrs Brown and Judy to the front door. By the door, Mrs Brown paused and sniffed. <laughs> That's very strange, she said. There seems to be a smell of bacon everywhere this morning. Can you smell it, Paddington? Paddington started. He put the suitcase guiltily behind himself and sniffed. He had several expressions which he kept for emergencies. There was his thoughtful expression, when he stared into space and rested his chin on a paw. Then there was his innocent one, which wasn't really an expression at all. He decided to use this one. It's very strong, he said truthfully, for he was a truthful bear. And then he added, perhaps not quite so truthfully, I wonder where it's coming from. If I were you, whispered Judy, as they walked along the road towards the tube station, I should be more careful in future when you pack your suitcase. Paddington looked down. A large piece of bacon stuck out of the side of his case and was trailing on the pavement. Shoo! cried Mrs Brown as a grubby-looking dog came bounding across the road. Paddington waved his suitcase. Go away, dog! he said sternly. The dog licked its lips and Paddington glanced anxiously over his shoulder as he hurried on, keeping close behind Mrs Brown and Judy. Dear, said Mrs Brown, I have a funny feeling about today, as if things are going to happen. Do you ever get that feeling, Paddington? Paddington considered for a moment. Sometimes, he said vaguely, as they entered the station. At first Paddington was a little bit disappointed in the underground. He liked the noise and the bustle and the smell of warm air which greeted him as they went inside. But he didn't think much of the ticket. He examined carefully the piece of green cardboard which he held in his paw. It doesn't seem much to get for 80 pence, he said. After all the lovely whirring and clanking noises the ticket machine had made, it did seem disappointing. He'd expected much more for his money. But Paddington... Mrs Brown sighed. You only have a ticket so that you can ride on the train. They won't let you on otherwise. She looked and sounded rather flustered. Secretly, she was beginning to wish they had waited until later in the day when it wasn't quite so crowded. 
there was also the peculiar business of the dogs. Not one, but six dogs of various shapes and sizes had followed them right inside. She had a funny feeling it had something to do with Paddington, but the only time she caught his eye it had such an innocent expression. She felt quite upset with herself for having such thoughts. I suppose, she said to Paddington, as they stepped on the escalator, we ought really to carry you. It says you're supposed to carry dogs, but it doesn't say anything about bears. Paddington didn't answer. He was following behind in a dream. Being a very short bear, he couldn't easily see over the side. But when he did, his eyes nearly popped out with excitement. There were people everywhere. He'd never seen so many. There were people rushing down one side and there were more people rushing up the other. Everyone seemed in a terrible hurry. As he stepped off the escalator, he found himself carried away between a man with an umbrella and a lady with a large shopping bag. By the time he managed to push his way free, both Mrs Brown and Judy had completely disappeared. It was then that he saw a most surprising notice. He blinked at it several times to make sure, but each time he opened his eyes it said the same thing. Follow the amber light to Paddington. Paddington decided the underground was quite the most exciting thing that had ever happened to him. He turned and trotted down the corridor, following the amber lights, until he met another crowd of people who were queuing for the up escalator. Here, said the man at the top, as he examined Paddington's ticket. What's all this? You haven't been anywhere yet. That's all we have time for this time. Join me again next time to read the second part of chapter three.